Hey guys, I'm Kerry West and welcome back to my photography channel. So it's that time again. I've got a POV for you today. I've been going out in the morning a lot just because it's interesting to see uh, the difference in light and the direction that it's coming and stuff like that. So I've been having a lot of fun with that, but I decided to go out in the afternoon again and, and a little bit of blue hour and into the night a little bit like I used to do. And it's, it's been a little bit challenging, you know, like I, I get really used to shooting during the day and it gets really comfortable and I'm able to get into the swing of things a lot quicker and then I switch back to night and I have to sort of relearn stuff again and that and that happens when I get used to nighttime too and I have to sort of relearn to get back into the day shooting so I decided to, to go out and sharpen my nighttime skills a little bit of course I took the glorious Sigma 85 f1.4 it's my favorite lens especially for nighttime it's got that really bright aperture and nice long focal length it's just a, an excellent all-around lens as long as you can uh, sacrifice a little bit of wideness but I, I love the way that it looks I love the images it produces but yeah I had a lot of fun I think I got some pretty cool images that I'm proud of so we'll go ahead and jump into it don't forget to keep an eye open for the pug hidden in this video because if you're the first person to correctly post the timestamp where it's at I'll rub Vaseline on whatever you want me to rub it on please don't abuse that so let's get started Alright fellers and fellets, so like I said, this was right before sunset, uh, we didn't really get much golden hour light so it was really soft pretty much the whole time I was out, which was a really good way to sort of sharpen those skills because when I go out during the day I'm typically looking for really harsh shadows and shapes to play with and really emphasize contrast, but when you shoot in conditions like this, you're much more tied to colors and just overall aesthetics I think, at least for my style of shooting. So we started warming up here with a little shitty train photo and then moved on from there. So I want to apologize about the lack of hygiene my GoPro had on this day. I really need to help him trim his bush. I don't think he has hands, so I don't think he can use an electric trimmer, let alone a razor. I stopped here just to sort of play with the S shape on the sidewalk here. I always really liked this spot. I just haven't really stopped and tried to mess with it. On these cloudy days, the green foliage really pops in photos. So yeah, I sort of sat here and allowed this green weedage to pop in the center of the frame. And there's a bunch of yellow stuff around too, which kind of helped. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? If I was any better, they'd put a tax on me. <laughs> Gotta love that boomer humor. Excluding that S shape, this is a really cool angle too because you can really see all the way down this sidewalk with a nice wall next to it. And the look on this guy's face was really good too. He just had so much determination. If people gotta get around you, you get fucking filmed. What's that? We, you filming everything? No, I'm taking photos. That's a GoPro on your head, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess they are getting filmed too. <laughs> like, it's like, like I fucking, forget that it's there, like man. You're like right now, dog. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> you filming two people. <laughs> so what do you do, bro? What do you usually film? Do uh, I'm just doing street photography and stuff. So you're just taking pictures of people walking? Yeah, I just, I like find scenes and stuff, you know, and then I like sort of wait for people to pass through them and sometimes you get something really cool. There's a lot of lines right here. Yeah, it's it's this nice like S shape right here, and then and then and down here it's really cool. It almost it almost reminds me of like I don't know fucking Central Park or something with yeah, just bro. like the no shit, city bro. but nature at the same time. You know, I love this spot. Pictures are important these days. Yeah. People be trying to get away with shit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I've I've almost been jumped a couple times, and I, I feel like once they, they see this, shit, yeah, or? for sure. I mean, this shit ain't cheap, you know. No, like you once they like see this, shit. they're like, oh, oh fuck, I'm being. You know, I'm being filmed. Yep. Dude, like, like that's just like immunity from everything. Kinda. Like, I mean, like you tell them, like, like the police, like everything. Don't yeah. Everything. Yeah, the cops won't fuck with me. Yeah, that's for dude, sure. The only ones that ain't is like mafia motherfuckers. They won't. Yeah, I mean, there's crazy fucking people too. You never yeah. know, you know. Hi, right, man. Yeah, I'm gonna move on. Take it easy, buddy. Yeah, see you around. You have a good one. Another little S shape over here with this railing. I come by the spot all the time and I never really thought to try to use this pole as a foreground. And normally I would consider this subject a little bit too small, but I think with his avalanche jersey, it really made him pop against those green colors behind him. 
So I went down this bridge and turned around to catch people with the city behind them, and the first person I caught were these two dogs right here. I went black and white, and I went really heavy on the editing to really emphasize the light and shadow. I love how it turned out. So I initially thought that this one was better with all the different elements, but now that I look at it and after editing, I think I would have preferred if he was alone up there. Uh, maybe you can let me know what you think. Just try not to make me cry immediately. Hey buddy. So I saw these two little wiggly turds and I absolutely had to get some photos of them. This little puppy was so goddamn cute and soft. And if you're uneducated, I might have to tell you that these are not the pugs hidden in the video. These are French Bulldogs. I waited here to try to get somebody walking through this misty light, and I got this girl, I I don't know, I, I think I just got a bad angle on it with these poles in the way. I should have probably stuck around and tried some other things, but I think it just came out a little bit too messy. I took this photo as documentation to give to OSHA or Pentagon or something, as proof of just pure unethical business practices. This poor plastic woman stands in this window all day and night. I really doubt she gets paid, and frankly, I'm deeply offended. I tend not to take any recognizable photos of homeless people unless I can offer them something in return. But, um, yeah, the light here was just so good, and, uh, you can really only see his legs and feet in the photo anyway. I tend to think photos like these are a bit cliche, but I loved the shape and colors of this bokeh, especially with the cross-stitch pattern of this fence in the foreground. I was about to stick around and switch to the 24 to 70 and wait uh, to get a better view of this spiral ramp, but I am way too much of a lazy piece of shit, so I just grabbed one with the 85. I kind of like how it turned out. I, again, went really heavy with the black and white processing. These next two are definitely a couple of my favorites of the day. I just, I love this smooth gradient from the left to the right and this giant jutting triangle of stone that uh, this guy and his dog were standing out on. And I think it really works that his dog is pure black because it stands out against the white water. I love this dude sitting here in his suit and briefcase rolling a joint in the middle of this bridge. I should have really stuck around and tried to get a bit of a closer shot because I think it's kind of hard to tell what he's doing just by looking at the photo, but I just decided to keep walking. Here's an example of why I really love shooting in blue hour because, like I said, you can kind of balance the, the natural darkness of the scene and also get a nice clean image because there's still plenty of ambient light. So I really pushed this one down to make it feel like nighttime while letting that little bit of light that was hitting this area really shine through. Sharp as balls. Shitty day. Get that. He's a stylish old man. Again, we tried to stop and shoot this mist coming out of this restaurant. I, I think I failed it again. I think it's just a bad photo. I saw this guy with this little kid growing out of his shoulders a couple times, and uh, this is the first time I shot him, and I think this was a pretty bad one. I think it was just a bit too bright and busy behind them. So I noticed they were getting on the bus, and of course I can't stop myself from shooting somebody getting on the bus. And I think these ones turned out a lot better. The way that the light from inside the bus was hitting them really made them pop nicely against the background, especially in that first one. Awesome. Yeah, it's a little bit more enjoyable because that, you know, kind of Wow. That was the most annoying voice I've ever heard. <laughs> you ever, uh, fuck, I can't remember her name. You ever see The Last Man on Earth? The what? The last man on earth. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember that girl's name. She's hilarious, Hi. but 
Her voice. Shaw. Shaw, yeah, that's right. I knew it was Kristen. Somebody you referenced that, I was like, oh, I know exactly. She even kind of looked like her, too. I like, know. when I looked across the street, I was like, that face is, like, kind of horrifying. I, like, weirdly, even more nasally than... Yeah, it's, it's like, like even worse, dude. Like, that chick like, is, like, her it. playing a caricature of herself. <laughs> I really like this one, and while I, th I think his face could be doing something a little more interesting, maybe I left a little bit too early, but this is why I love shooting inside restaurants from out on the street, because they always have such nice, dim, soft lighting in there, and it, it looks really good on people's faces most of the time. I thought this one was kind of interesting. I don't think it's a great photo or anything. It's very blue and a bit blown out, but I just thought it was funny how she's literally making the face of a fish from behind that fish tank. Here's another one of my favorites of the night, and it's kind of funny there. They all seem to be black and white, but um, yeah, I just love how she looked up at the perfect time as if she was looking off into the distance. And this is why I definitely want to do a video soon on just black and white. So I think I could really sharpen my black and white skills doing that. So that was the last photo. I hope you enjoyed. Um, it's always really fun when me and Ty get together. We just have a good time, and uh, I think we have similar shooting styles. We often see the same sort of things but uh, not so much to where we don't help each other out and spot things that the other one might not have. So it was really interesting. I'll post this stuff down below again. I've probably done that in several videos already, but he's, uh, he's got some pretty cool stuff going. So I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, make sure that you subscribe or just show up to my house and give me money. Or, uh, I mean, really, you can show up to my house as long as you don't burn it down. I'll take that as a sign of respect. Yeah, but make sure you subscribe because I got some really cool stuff coming. I've got some more portrait of photographers in the work with some uh, some Denver street photographers that are really good. So yeah, you don't want to miss that. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.